we have de- de- designed the course in four day, five days course. So the first day we will be covering these kinds of topics, the agenda, basic concept of the die casting for those who are very new to the die casting field or those who have not worked on the design or on the machine. So it is better that they understand the whole concept of it. And then we quite often we come to know about that first phase, second phase, third phase. What is the meaning of that? The die design procedure, understanding the cold chamber machine, because understanding the cold chamber machine will go a long way in designing the die. Okay, because very important is we have to understand about the machine. Only then we will be able to utilize the maximum capacity available on the machine. That is the whole idea behind that is. And then whatever, whenever you design in a die, of course, you will be taking care of all the parameters. But if the product design is not so very well designed, then we will end up in problem. And that is why it is essential that you understand the path design also in a detailed manner, which I'm making it very simple. This through the NOTCA, NOTCA means North American Die Casting Association, which is the world governing body on die casting and uh, there are so many topics available by them if you once your company becomes a member you can be given access to all the technical literatures available on the website they also conduct uh, on online courses you can also take participation and then benefit, take benefit out of it this is the first day program the second day program is uh, made as a basic guidelines for designing then design the dice with illustration, how to <coughs> design of a die with the step-by-step process, with the practical example. <coughs> what is the tolerances we have to consider when we design the die? What is the meaning of across the parting line, along the parting line? How does it affect the die? Tolerances, how does it affect? And then very important uh, uh, chapter is the gate, runner, and PQ square what is PQ square that will be dealing and then hands-on experience also you'll gain it. So next is the gate render workflow and event. The next day we'll continue the PQ square diagram of the machine. Then thermal balancing. Thermal balancing is very important for getting the production parts for the volume what we are talking going to talk about because then the the die is heated to 700 degrees, 680 degrees centigrade within one minute. Again, it is getting cooled. Again, it is getting heated. So it is very important that we understand the thermal balancing of the die. Then coatings for die casting dies. How does it help the coatings in the present day scenario for enhancing the die life? Because the present day, the order of the day is no customer is willing to accept the normal die life of 100,000 shots because each and every customer's expectation because the die cost is very huge, almost like a two Mercedes Benz cars and an average because it's not to speak about that very small dies because you are handling the what kind of die cost you are handling, all of us should know. So for that, the minimum expectation from the each customer nowadays is almost 150,000 shorts to 200,000 shorts. That means 1.5 lakhs to 2 lakhs and an average minimum. If something happens, then they will not keep quiet. They will ask you to replace it. So how to get the die life? The next is the next day we are going to talk about the ejection system because there are so many problems when the ejection is not designed, the ejection system is not designed properly and then get into the other kinds of problems which eventually stall the die in, during production. So it will not be able to run the die even for 1,000 shots or 2,000 shots. Then very important thing is mechanical strength. In the mechanical strength, what are the topics it is included? Die steels and heat treatment. Then very some of the calculation are included. Practically, how to do the calculation of moving die housing thickness, which will help you in determining the thickness of the die housing and especially on the moving of dikes. Then they, I have included one chapter on SMED, even though we are not going to discuss very deeply on the subject, it is a very big subject. The important 
point why why i want to bring it to the surface here is if you are very comfortable with the smed then whatever the dies you design then you will take care of lot of standards into your mind and then design the dies those who are doing the and uh, the product i mean uh, the production side they are, they have to take care how to standardize there are so many information what is going to be provided so we will talk about that in a detailed manner in the smed one small example which i would like to give you nowadays all of you must have must be aware the formula one racing car so the formula one racing car so you know number of laps and then they go in the 230 km speed and then may I, all of you know the moment you come to know about formula one we immediately remember michael schumacher so i encourage all of you to visit the uh, youtube channel find out how does it smed is employed in uh, changing the tire wheels because they cannot afford to change just like that a few hours or few minutes sorry few minutes so nowadays what is the standard world standard to 1.88 second they change the wheels now when we talk about that single minute so it should be less than 10 minutes that is the subject behind it then when you design the die you should also remember to build the die with the dfma technique so what is the dfma technique how does it uh, built into the die that we are going to talk about in a detailed manner on the other day fourth day or third or fourth day then another important topic is the simulation the simulation as you know which helps you in understanding the problems well in advance prior to manufacture of the die because the, uh, the today almost all the industries whoever designed the die get the job done either through outsource or they if they, if they can afford to buy they buy it and then train the people and then they simulate by themselves there are so many results you will get in through that we can avoid lot of defects in advance so in we can move towards its zero defect concept then i will be sharing some of my ex- experiences through the case study how we have solved the problems then we have the the same uh, case study the casting images casting images are made into two parts and then the die photos with a different uh, uh, range so that now you will have an idea how does the die look like because the real life photo but with my 50 years of experience have taken so many things and then with their permission i am presenting all the for dice photographs and then this on the uh, fifth day we will be doing the on the job training because on the i already informed everything as mr nishan informed we will be trying to share all the information by the evening so that we will be able to go through and start understanding work on the subject and then you will be ready on the fifth day so you have at least four days time to prepare so if you have any doubts that is what you are planning to conduct tomorrow maybe not tomorrow day after tomorrow and third day and fourth day afternoon half an hour for two teams another half an hour for another two team whatever the doubt you have if you can note down and then ask me i will be the co-host i will participate in your discussion you can shoot out any kind of questions so i will be i'll not give you the answer but you have the idea behind it if you work by yourself then you will come to know where you have to correct yourself there is no question of mistakes because we have to learn that is a, a subject behind it then what is the future for die casting that is what i am going to discuss so it is a typical casting cycle so molding mold closes then it takes pouring then it is the pouring through manual or through automation then you have a injection this piece called injection is the part is cooled the mold gets opened then the castings get ejected then after ejection the casting is taken out from the die through the extractor so this also a robot then this plunger is getting lubricated for it is getting ready for the next cycle then release of die coat so this water the die gets cooled 
and then it is ready for next shot. This is the cycle repeats each and every cycle. So he said, I just want to show you how does the machine look like. Those who are not familiar, we can always see that. I'll quickly tell you only in small information. It is a total machine. This is a machine bed. This is a control unit. Then this portion is called the short end unit. Whatever you are saying here. In the short end, you have, can you see one rod supported in the other end? This is called the short sleeve. This in the piston rod assembly slides inside the cylinder, inside the bore. So it is called plunger tip, the plunger rod. And then back side, you have the accumulator cylinder, accumulator pressure. To get the accumulator instantaneous uh, force, we have the nitrogen uh, reservoir, which every cycle it releases, and then thereby you are getting the intensification. We are going to talk about in a detailed manner in the later chapters. Then this is called the fixed platen. That may have the name in indicates the platen is fastened with the machine base. Then this one is the moving platen, which moves in the tie boss. It is called it four guide pillar or four tie boss. In the tie boss are connected this pillar, this platen, and then the back side is called one reaction platen. In between this, this tie rod is connected, and then this uh, moving platen is moving, and the, to support that we have the bottom shoes which will uh, support here okay and then with this mechanism is get done with a toggle clamp arrangement why the toggle clamp that we will see in a detailed manner okay these are the controls for the various functions there is a safety guard unless the safety guard closes the cycle will not take place that means this plunger will not move that is how the triggering mechanism has been, uh, limit switch has been built up. And this unit is a water spray unit. What is not shown, is you can see the back side one unit is there. That is extractor unit. The front side is a outer ladder for taking the material and pouring into the short sleeve. So where it does it, the application. The application is widely in aerospace, agriculture, automotive, building, hardware, electrical and electronic equipment, hand tools, home appliances, industrial products, instrumentation, lawn and garden equipment, office furniture, portable power tools, office machines, portable power tools, recreational equipment. Nowadays, it is going to be found in electric vehicles, which is going to be the future of the day. So here, you can see the typical operations involved in the short end. I'll explain one by one, then we will see the metrics later. Now, in this course, we will be dealing this all these six steps very extensively. That is why it is important that we understand each and every step very clearly what is happening in each step, every step. What is not included here is how the metal is poured is by the manual or the auto that is not our subject matter. Subject matter is once the metal is poured, this is called short sleeve. The short sleeve and then up to this is called, up to the machine platen is called short sleeve. From the machine platen to the die, it will be as a screw bush. Sometimes customer may ask, Build the short sleeve along with the screw bush. That's why it is called integral short sleeve. What you are seeing now is the integral short sleeve. So through this metal is poured. There is an opening here. Metal is poured here. You can see one small tip. This is called the plunger tip, which is connected to the plunger rod. So this is called just the pouring. The in the first phase or the slow approach, the metal is pushed so that now all the air in the front end it is pushed through the uh, runner gate and chill vent or workflow and then the metal will be placed exactly at the entrance of 
cavity which is called the gate what is the metric you should know at the end of the first phase the metal will remain at the gate this is the point number 1 this is what you should note down in the second phase it is called the fast fill during fast fill the metal is injected at uh, very high pressure and then and then is accelerated uh, speed then it fills the cavity within 40 to 60 milliseconds what we have to understand irrespective of the weight of the casting this is the point we should note down irrespective of the weight of the casting what is the meaning casting weight may be 20 g or casting weight weight may be 2 g 2 uh, 2 kilos but the fill time cannot exceed more than 40 to 60 milliseconds please try to understand we are talking about millisecond 1 millisecond is equal to 1 divided by 1000 seconds as you know one second is full we know we can just by blink of an eye one second goes so that portion of the one second is divided into 1000 parts and then 40 parts of 1000 parts that means 40 millisecond that is a 40 milliseconds to 60, 60 millisecond the casting should get filled why it is like that so this is what the research have been found out over the years over the past 50 70 years of experience they have found out this vital criteria okay then this next phase is called the intensification what is the meaning of intensification in intensification there may not you may not be able to comprehend how does the uh, plunger moves because it, it is very difficult to see the intensification phase but how to get the feel <coughs> once you end of the fill then this accumulator is getting released what is the purpose of accumulator i will explain see for example this is acting on the surface so that means plunger area so when you talk about the injection force the injection force is acting on the face so that means force is equal to pressure multiplied by area so what is the area here this is the plunger tip area so through the plunger tip area the force is getting acted so that means you will come to know what is the pressure you are getting it so for this first phase what is the speed that is called v1 please jot down all of you this is the international terminology used all over the world once you say v1 people will immediately come to know you are talking about first phase just like when how you talk about core or cavity people come to know which is core what is cavity similarly when you say first phase they will if a v1 they will come to know uh, first phase velocity what is the unit of measurement meters per second or centimeters per second okay these are all the things which you should remember which will be helpful for designing the die